Well, you got the reins of Castamere playing in the credits. This should work out well. Watching your vicious bastard die gave me more pleasure than a thousand lying whores. Did somebody call for an Emmy? Anyway, I'll get to the trial by the end of the review. Did you guys catch Bravos in the opening sequence? The opening shot actually reminded me of Fellowship of the Ring, where Frodo's just staring at these massive statues with his mouth open. Uh, but Stannis is so badass, he just takes one look at that Titan and just says, like, well, just keep sailing, I don't give a fuck. Speaking of money, I actually found it kind of funny how, like, Tywin was willing to pay guys to go and hunt the Hound, when, in fact, like, in the previous episode, he just said that they were flat broke. Long story short, Stannis now has both the men and the green. Uh, thanks to Davos was convincing, which is a little bit contradictory, at least in terms of the show I found it contradictory, because this opening sequence with, with Davos negotiating with the guys in the Iron Bank kind of opposes what Tywin was, was saying in the previous episode when Cersei was talking about, well, you know, it's it's run by people, surely we can talk things out, and Tywin was, no, like, it's it's not not an organization that is to be negotiated with. It's a temple built of stones. If one stone is removed, another one takes its place. Um, but then I think this episode serves to state, well, Tywin says that there's no negotiating with the bank because he's already talked to them and try to try to, you know, pull the strings in terms of wanting to get them on his side so that they can oppose Stannis if he asks. For a load. Asha's section started off really badass and then it just kind of like turned into like a waste of time pretty much. That still doesn't make, you know, it doesn't make it less badass. It's just like, well, that was a waste of time. My brother's already dead. And I kind of mentioned that in other, in another review I did. Psychologically, Theon is another person. He's gone. So much so that, you know, Ramsay is giving him a bath. And by the way, I could not have been the only person to have like been thinking, are they gonna show the whole like the lack of a member? Because no, even even HBO wouldn't push it that far. So he takes a bath, and it turns out that Ramsay's gonna be using him. Reek is gonna have to pretend to be Theon Greyjoy, and I kind of wonder if, in pretending to be his old self, he might revert to actually becoming his old self. That'd be kind of an interesting psychological phenomenon, you know. He, he pretended, or he was made to become Reek, and now he's gonna be made to play Theon Greyjoy. So, I mean, what? That's some fucked up shit, Ramsay. On the bright side, we saw a dragon in this episode, which means we probably won't see another one till at least three more episodes. Save up that budget. I like the fact that this section showed the problem with taking a group of people that were masters and, and just crucifying them all. Because the problem with doing that, without a proper trial, and without getting to know the level of involvement of each person in maintaining slavery and violence, is that not every asshole is at the same level of assholishness. Let's move on. If last episode, first of his name, was about Littlefinger's time to shine, this episode, putting, putting aside uh, Tyrion's speech at the end, like, Varys was amazing in this. Just incredible. The, the one-liners, the dialogue in this, top-notch for Varys. First of all, let's talk about his capacity for surveillance and intelligence. This guy must be running, like, the first medieval Facebook. He knows everything. Like, everything. He knows what's going on in, in Essos with, with Danny. Uh, even without Jorah's support anymore. Like, this guy even knew that the Hound said, fuck the king. I mean, are you kidding me? So when he says, oh, my, my little birds tell me, yeah, your little birds, you mean Twitter? Then again, him knowing what's going on in Essos makes more sense later on because Oberyn deduces that he must be from Essos. That being said, did you guys watch the interaction between these two? looking at the empty Iron Throne. I kind of felt like they wanted to use Oberyn as a substitute for Littlefinger in order to provide Varys with some intellectual stimulation. And I also noticed, if you if you notice the contrast between Oberyn being a, a bisexual and then Varys, it's revealed in this episode that he's actually asexual. But by the end, I think you could tell that Varys is a little bit disappointed with the conversation. Like he wanted somebody to be on, on Littlefinger's level because he says, Varys says that in knowing what desire does to people, 
he, I mean, he just, that's not something that he, he goes for, you know. In fact, not going for those types of things allows him to have more time to pursue other things. But then Oberyn messes it up because he's like, such as, like... You do not ask Varys a direct question and expect a direct answer. That's not how he talks, you know. And if you look at those scenes with Littlefinger, it's just, it's trying to get information from somebody without being direct by talking in, in riddles and cryptic sort of messages and metaphors and all these things. And that's what makes their conversations valuable. And I think Oberyn sort of failed to do that. And that's okay. That's not his character. But I think it's very interesting that Littlefinger is, is pretty much the only person, as of right now, the only person in the realm that can hold a real, solid, intellectual conversation with this guy. And we even see that a little bit of that in the, in the trial. When, when uh, Tyrion asks him, do you remember what you told me? And what does Varys say? What does he say? How does he answer Tyrion's question? Sadly, my lord, I never forget a thing. Super ambiguous answer. Because you don't know what the fuck that means. Is he going to try and help Tyrion eventually? Or is he going to be a bystander? You don't know. You don't know. Always keep your foes confused. Obviously, the trial was full of tension, but I also thought it was really funny because it felt like I was watching a more intense portrayal by other actors of Tyrion's his best quotes in the entire series. Your joy will turn to ashes in your mouth and you will know your debt has been paid. Perhaps you should speak softly to me. Monsters are dangerous and right now kings are dying like flies. Hycelle was on some like Severus Snape type of shit. Potions master type of deal like uh, uh, Basilisk Venom. Ten points to the House of Lannister. I mean Gryffindor. Where am I? And you know this episode also served to create a new fan favorite character. Because after what she did in this episode, I'm sure everybody loves Shay. As long as her head is no longer attached to her body. And see, here's the thing. Tyrion had always struggled with being vulnerable. Um, he had loved a girl. It didn't work out. And so Shay is like, sort of like, the newest opportunity for him or she was the newest opportunity for him to love somebody and it's like in this episode well that just went down the shitter and it ain't coming back now i do have to say this in the books george kind of made it seem that the reason why she was testifying against him was because she had been paid to do so so she was kind of like bought off in a sense the way the show creators handled it um, it made it seem as if she was doing this out of spite because she was still heartbroken. So the question that arises is then, does her reasoning matter? To me, fuck no, because the end result is the same. You still have Tyrion lo looking super wounded, super hurt, and again, props to Peter Dinklage's acting, because I mean, like, he's like a wounded baby lion cub, you know, you see him like... And then that turns into anger, and oh, he goes off. You saw him go off. But the fact of the matter is, is that, that, that bit with Shay, that's what pushed him off the edge. Even though she was a whore, right, uh, I think Tyrion like, saw Shay as like the one pure thing in King's Landing that, that he could always turn to for support. And now that that's gone, now that Sansa's left... It really has become a rat's nest, as described by Ned in the very first episode. I wish I was the monster you all think I am. The only person that actually genuinely cared about Tyrion was, was Jaime. And I love that scene with, with Tywin prior to um, Shay's testimony, not only because you get to see Tywin's plan about, you know, sending, sending Tyrion off, exiling him, uh, over to the wall, and then having Jamie be the the uh, you know the the heir of Castle Rock, but because you have Jamie stepping up to the plate, and you see how much he cares about his brother, so much so that he's actually willing to give up like this life that he's chosen, because he doesn't want to be. He he's renounced the rights, you know. He doesn't want to be in charge of Castle Rock. He he's a king's guard, right? 
But because he cares so much about Terry and he actually says, you know what, okay, I'll do what you want me to do, just get my brother out of this. I think one of the best moments in the episode is when Tywin says, what do you want me to do? He killed his king. And then Jamie's like, so did I. Tyrion asks for a trial by combat. And I think the ending of this episode makes it seem as if he's gonna pick Jamie, but you'd be surprised, actually. Actually, if you've been paying attention to the previews, I think you already have an idea as to who it's gonna be, but I won't say it just in case. I thought it was an amazing episode. Like, Peter Dinklage just knocked it out of the park, and then the stuff I mentioned with Barris, those two things made it, it's definitely one of the best episodes of this season. Um, like, my favorites thus far have been one, two, and now this one, so it's really hard to pick, but I mean, this one has to be one of the best episodes. But those are my thoughts. Tell me yours in the comment section below. Subscribe to my channel if you, if you can, and if you enjoy my reviews, and like the video if you did like the review. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you guys later.